begin our lesson in color by looking at the different locations we can apply color and find color. So with this shape, I can change both the fill and the stroke in the properties panel. I can also double click either the fill or the stroke in the toolbar. As you look at the default swatches, note that black and registration are not the same. Registration prints on all four plates, the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black plate. You want to use regular black, not registration black. The default swatches are set up in CMYK because I set this document up with an intent to print. If I had set it up with an intent to digital publish, you would see RGB colors. I can also change the tint of my color with the swatches open. If I apply the tint and want to use this color again, I need to drag that into my swatches panel and add it as a swatch. Notice that it is a different swatch than the original color we applied. I'm going to open my window, color, and swatches panel so you can compare that to the properties panel. Down here, I have swatch views. I can show color, gradient, or all. I can group swatches or delete swatches as well. Let's look at the flyout menu. Here I can create a new color swatch. I can also load and save swatches, which we will do later. And I can change how I view these. So I can view these as a large list or as a thumbnail. Let's go ahead and look at creating a new color swatch again. I'm going to go into my flyout menu and new color swatch and this is where I can start creating my color. Notice it's in CMYK. So I can name it with the color value or I can pick a particular name, and so let's say I'm going to create a light pink. I can come down here with my color mode, change that if I need to. Well, let's just go ahead and create that kind of light pink. And I'm going to add that to my swatches. Let's now create a tint swatch. So I'm going to begin with whatever color I have selected. So if I have this blue selected, we're going to be creating a tint of that blue. So new tint swatch, and all I have is a tint slider, and I'm going to add that to my swatches as well. To create a color gradient swatch, I can name my gradient. I can decide what type of gradient I want, either linear or radial. And down here's my gradient ramp. So this is what my gradient is going to look like. And if I click one of these stops, I can start altering my stop color. So I can mix my own CMYK. I can also pull them from my swatches panel. So if I want to pull that light pink we created for my first ramp. And then I'm going to select my black. And this time I want to blend my own CMYK color. And so there is our gradient, kind of a pink to a, a salmon. And we're going to add that. And so now we have a gradient swatch as well. You can also create some swatches from the color panel. You can use the flyout menu to decide what color channel you want to work with. Lab stands for lightness, and then there's two other color spectrums. We've already talked about CMYK, our print view, 
and RGB is screen view. So let's go ahead and create a, a CMYK swatch. There's another way to start building your color story and that is to use an eyedropper tool. And I'm going to choose to eyedropper from a photo. So let's go ahead and place a photo. So there's our photo and I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool and I'm going to color pick and notice that swatch changed and I'm going to drag that to my swatches. Reset my eyedropper tool by hitting I, color pick again, and if I'm not quite satisfied with that color, a handy tip is to zoom into the photo and really almost get a pixel by pixel view so you can pick the color you want. I want one of these more lighter tones. I to go back to my eyedropper and I like that color. Now notice it's picking an RGB. That's because the photo is an RGB. The advantages of using that technique of color picking from the photo really makes the application of that color to either text or shape later to really interrelate with the photos and kind of create a strong dominant color. Let's go back to our swatches panel and talk about some other colors we can work with. I'm going to go back to that new color swatch and you may have noticed under color mode there's all kinds of different color modes that we could use. For example, if you've ever printed in any situation and you've had a feeling of, well, what I saw on the screen doesn't really match what came out of the printer, the idea of color books, which you see down here, are really to help resolve that issue. You can purchase a print of a Pantone solid coated library and you'll get a booklet of what those look like and it'll be printed on say an 80 pound gloss. You can hold it in your hand, look at how things will print and if you select that same numbered color, even though it might look different on your screen, you can be assured that it looks the same as the Pantone book. So that is our look at working with color swatches. <laughs>